All right, we're live. Wrestling Bookmarks, one of my favorite guests tonight, Princess Victoria. And, of course, John Cosper, one of the creators of COVIDCon. Thanks for coming on tonight, guys. Thanks for having me. We were just talking, Eddie. It's, it's, it's been uh, this, this uh, Saturday will be a year since COVIDCon actually went uh, went live. It's crazy. It's un- <laughs> it's you know, well, it's, what's even crazier is that everyone that stole our idea and made yeah. money off of it, and we <laughs> haven't got anything. Well, you know, hey, yeah, more power. The the, the innovate, yeah, was um, actually Kevin. I heard Kevin Sullivan say this last night. The forerunners are never the ones that they, they get the credit, and the, you know, right. it's always the people that come after. He was he was talking about Madman Bondo and his uh, uh, his legacy as a deathmatch wrestler, and you know, but uh, you know, but but the, you know, hey, yeah, we were still the first. We got the bragging rights. Yeah. We got the t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> All That's right, right, so we got the the books out now, right? The Princess Victoria book is out. Mm-hmm. And yes, when, did it, when did it officially come out? When did it officially come out? Oh, March fourth, uh, something okay. like that. Yeah. So yeah, March fourth. Will you be going around and doing any of the any of the shows when when they're finally you know when they start opening up? Yeah, I actually I'm doing a show on the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th. Oh, okay. In New Jersey is I'm going to be in New Jersey and New York. I'm doing a virtual signing, and I believe two live signings. Okay. Or I believe it's called the is it the Hideaway, John? Oh, Heroes Hideaway. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, a promoter's bringing me in, but it's going to be, you know, in the big WrestleCon um Hideaway thing. Okay. Oh, cool. So what is that? Yeah, it, that's in New Jer- that's in New Jersey. Yep. Yep. Ooh, all gonna, all, all gonna, these prom- well, all these promoters want me on the East Coast now. Yep. And I was there for twenty seven years. <laughs> they could have got me really cheap. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> now that's awesome. I'm excited. I'm excited that uh, shows are finally coming back. Well, yeah. same here. Same here. Yeah, and I get my first vaccine Saturday. Oh, nice. Oh, good, good. Yeah, my sister has been nagging me because she's worried. <laughs> you know, you need to have a little protection. I said, I'm old. I'm, I'm tough as leather. What more protection do I need? <laughs> uh, John, are you going to be going to any of them at all? Um, I will be actually in June. I'm going to be in West Virginia for the weekend, Charleston, West Virginia. Um, they're doing, it's just going to, uh, I should, I should look the dates up here real quick. Um, you see, it is June 9th and 10th in Charleston, West Virginia at Skateland. Uh, they've got a Friday night men's tournament. Uh, the, the three big names on that list are Aaron Williams, Gary J and Jake Christ. Um, all three outstanding independent guys. If you're, if you're in that area, um, on Saturday, the 12th, they're having a girl fight show. Madman Pondo's group is, is doing a, a ladies show. Um, and then that evening is the masters of pain Deathmatch match tournaments. Uh, and actually I was, I was having dinner with Pondo last night. They've got a guy who, in Czechoslovakia who bought a ticket. Doesn't even know if he's going to be able to come because the airports aren't open in Czechoslovakia yet, but he bought a ticket for this show in West Virginia. They've got people coming from England. They've got people coming from Japan, you know, just all over for, for a deathmatch tournament in the middle of West Virginia. So um, wow. I think people are starved for some wrestling for sure. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll be there. Uh, and then I'll be at looks like Sorry. we have a surprise guest coming on right now. Let's see. Okay. We got Raven. Raven! Lake. <laughs> My Hello, Miss Ricky. I love I, you. I miss you. Oh, I miss you too, darling. I heard that uh, there's a birthday coming up soon, and that there might be a need for a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's now, a big six zero. Now, now Vicky, we uh, say uh, your sister Mary asked me to put something together. We got a couple surprise guests coming on, and some messages for you, because it is her big six zero next week on May the fifth, and. Uh, so this 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 is a, so your first surprise of the evening anyway. So that's why my sister has a podcast <laughs> at six o'clock. Oh, see, surprise, surprise! Well, Happy birthday, birthday darling. Too, so we'll see. <laughs> she's a brat. <laughs> well, if she's related to you, is she as much of a handful? Yes. Yeah. They they separated <laughs> us. They separated us at her birth. 
because it was not if we were going to take over a small third world country if we were together. It was <laughs> how young would we be when we did it. I don't doubt that for a second. <laughs> God, I miss you, girl. I miss you I'm, so much. I miss you, too. Hopefully, when all of this uh, COVID crap is done, we can get together and have a few drinks. And, and uh, hopefully, I won't be babysitting. Because I did a really crappy job. <laughs> no, you, no, you actually did a very good job. It took me a long time to get out from underneath your eyes. <laughs> this poor child, when I went to CAC in 2018, she had just met me. And it was Debbie Combs, Beverly Shade, Despina Montagas, poor Raven was the youngest, and me, and Judy Martin. And they set her up as my babysitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She Ooh. had her hands full. I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> well, it was my first out in like six years. And my first CAC. Yeah. Yeah, I learned I learned uh, quite the lesson that night, let me tell you. You can't take uh -huh. your eyes off of her for a second. That's all I did. Literally, <laughs> I think I turned around for like two minutes. That was it. Game no, over. actually, what happened was I told her I was thirsty. <laughs> and have you ever all ever been to the point that I am not, I, I'm not fit for human consumption. I need to get away from people. She wasn't around the corner at TGIF at the Gold Coast before I had hit the uh, elevator and was on my way upstairs. <laughs> But you forgot the whole beginning part of that. I don't know if you want to throw that out there because I, I, I believe it's in your book. So they may want to read about it. But uh, are you, you talking about you guys at me. hitting me? Are you talking about you guys hitting me with the gummies? Oh, no, I didn't tell anybody about that. <laughs> no, I no. didn't. It's, it's in the book. <laughs> oh. No, 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 no. I'm, uh, I'm talking about the, uh, the strut off. I've got those pictures on my on my Facebook. I'm proud you of that. You have pictures of it? I think we put yes. one in the book, yeah. yeah. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I've got the picture where I've got my hand up in the air, and I'm telling him, if you drop me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I yeah, literally I, turned I, around and ordered one drink, and the next thing I know, I turn around, and, well, there she is. <laughs> They came to me. I was being a good girl. I was in my bar <laughs> stool at the bar. I didn't go after anybody. They came after me. I'm innocent this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I don't know who just did, did that, mm -hmm, but thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, <laughs> he helped write the book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Raven and I have spoken. I've got that. I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. I've got Raven's version of the story. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Raven, it was. Where, a, where, are you, where are you calling in from? Uh, from Vancouver, BC. Oh, okay, Man, you guys got light forever out there. Yeah, we got the what? You got light forever. It still looks like it's still daytime there. It's only five five forty. Oh, nice. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm in I'm in Pasco, Washington. It's only five thirty here too. Yeah. Uh, I wish I, I wish I lived on the west coast. I feel like I feel like everything gets over, and you can go to bed at a normal time. Like when you live on the East Coast, nothing gets over till midnight. Yeah, this morning I was at my uh, my desk at, at the office and it was about eleven o'clock and I looked at like it's like two years ago I was rolling out of bed at the Gold Coast and getting ready to go to my first day of first CAC. You know, and it was it was it was nice being you know by the time I woke up you know it was it was like my lunch hour you know back home and everything and so well, I, I didn't I'm hate assuming, it. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming CAC is gonna is gonna happen this year, right? In September, yeah. It's they, okay. say, yeah. they say it is. We'll see. Well, that's yeah. good. Yeah. There'll be a so, lot less Canadians there this year, though. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as soon as they open the borders, I've got my passport. You're in trouble. Oh, I look <laughs> forward to it. And then we'll take a little bit of a drive about, I think it's about 40 minutes. 40 minutes from here, Velvet Lives. To, uh, is it, do you pronounce it a gazees? Oh, Agassi. Agassi. It's Agassi. Agassi. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. That, I've been waiting to ask somebody 
<laughs> because Velvet doesn't talk on the phone because she can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what Agassiz. All right, I'll try to remember yeah. that. Agassiz. When I first saw it, I thought it was a gases. But it's it, not. It, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> it's A G A I Z Z. Yeah. Yeah, A G A I Z Z and it's Agassiz. Really? Agassiz. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Do you, know, do you know how long it took me to say Diametrius Earth? What is that? It's it's that earth that you feed to the pool. You know, your animals that helps them process. Oh. Oh. And it oh. also kills it kills snails and earwigs around your trees. Oh. My sister told me to go get this. It took me a week to learn how to pronounce it and look <laughs> it up and try to pronounce it just looking at it. <laughs> See, you teach me more than just about wrestling. I taught you more than about wrestling when I was at CAC. <laughs> <laughs> John, I wish you'd have been there. We had... Us girls and Miss Beverly Shade, God bless her soul. Mm. She was the oldest one there, and she put all of us in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Debbie Combs, Despina Montagas, Miss Little Lady Raven Lake, Penelope, Penelope Paradise. Paris. Yep. Yep. Judy Martin. Judy didn't hang long. No, we we all ended up on Fremont Street with my yeah. first 15 year old niece. <laughs> I, I, I lost her there, too. Yeah, I lost her. there too. <laughs> her and Debbie took off. You, listen, when you're down on Fremont Street and you've got all these women legends and I mean, these women are legends. It was actually the most incredible weekend for me myself because uh, myself, I never made it to the level that these women did. And to be able to spend the weekend with them was, oh my God, the most amazing thing in the world. But to be on Fremont Street with these women and they're all tough ass women, there's no telling these women what they can and cannot do. You can't yeah. tell them. So we're on Fremont Street, and I thought I had the ball. I thought I had all my ducks in a row. And we're all, like, talking and whatever. And I don't know who. Somebody distracted me because I know that those two are talking about going to the other end of Fremont Street where it's really not good down at the other end there. And I'm like, no, we should just stay at this end. Let's go check out the bands on the stage over here. And I turned around to talk to somebody, and I turned around, and those two were freaking gone again. Again, me and Debbie, uh, yeah, we yeah. got now. I will tell you this now, you know how tough Debbie is. Mm -hmm. I mean, my god, her mother's Cora, mm -hmm. yep, right? We got to a certain point, and she and on this side of the street, she said, Vicky, I said, What? She says, No, <laughs> <laughs> I said, Why? She says, because you can look at somebody wrong in five feet and they will shoot you. I said, yeah. okay. And we did an about mm. face. <laughs> yep. Wow. So Raven, what um what brought you into the into the wrestling industry? Did you grow up did you grow up, you know, watching watching it on TV or anything? Or uh, yeah, I started watching wrestling when I was like nine years old. Um, and I just I fell in love with it. I used to watch with my grandma. And uh, I just I fell in love with it, and I grew up with the Arrow, watching Miss Vicky and Velvet and all the most wonderful women wrestling. And as soon as I saw them on there, I was like, "Look at these powerhouse women! That's where I need to be." And from like that day on, I knew it was what I was going to do. And um, I did like uh, training in high school, like amateur wrestling, and we had to fight. My parents helped me fight the uh, school board so that women could actually be on a wrestling team because at that time we weren't allowed to actually be in tournaments. And then uh, after high school, I started training with uh, Michelle Starr and, uh, oh, there's a spider. Sorry, freak out. <laughs> 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 
you can't be a wrestler and be afraid of spiders. God. Okay. So, anyways, I started trying to. <laughs> I'll never leave this down. <laughs> God, I love um, you, girl. <laughs> So uh, I started training with Gorgeous Michelle Starr here in uh, Vancouver. And at that time, his class was just all, I'm watching the spider. At that time, it was all guys in the class. And um, he decided that, <laughs> sorry, Vicky. He decided he needed to have you. another woman. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> he uh, had to have another one, yeah. I'd already taken out the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, my, my wife's one of the toughest, strongest, most independent women you'll ever meet. And all that goes straight out the window the second she sees a spider. So you know. <laughs> They're creepy, those little <laughs> legs. <laughs> and it's funny because I even have one tattooed on my arm. I don't know if you can see that. What the hell? <laughs> Anyways, um, training with, uh, with uh, Michelle Starr, and he decided to bring in Velvet to help train me because there was no other women around there. So I was truly blessed. And that day, I tell you, we were, he had a ring in his backyard, and we were out there training. And he's like, I've got somebody coming to help you out today. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I expected one of the um, – I actually thought it was going to be Stacy Jackson that was coming. But um, the sliding door opens, and there's Velvet. And I tell you, my jaw almost hit the floor. I thought I was going to pass out right there. We were training and I was 17. So of course, you know, 17 back then I hadn't had kids. I looked real good. I had a real attitude and we were training and I got cocky and she, she knocked me out for him. She came off of those ropes wow. and she just clocked me. When I sat up, she's like, do you have anything else to say to me? I was like, no, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. Yeah, but I fell in love with wrestling when I was a kid. Oh, it's just, I love wrestling. It's like, it is my heart and soul, and I miss it every day. Um, I, I can't wrestle anymore because I've had multiple concussions, and I have uh, a neck injury that I just no longer can. They said if I bump the wrong way, I could be paralyzed from the neck mm. down. So wow. that's it. You know, following after your legends is one thing, but that's a little ridiculous, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. We have more things in common than I think we know. I know. I know. Start taking glucosamine cord right now. That's a big word. You need to send that to me in a message. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to look it up the spelling. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. My spider's well, what, gone, by the way. What she's not telling you <laughs> is she does referee every once in a while right now, right? Uh, I, I was refereeing up until uh, just before the COVID thing hit. And then uh, I was feeling really good. I thought I was going to try and do a comeback. And um, I went to the school and I was rolling around and I decided, oh, I wonder if I could still do a flip bump. Uh, I can no longer ref. I can't do anything anymore. I'm completely out. It knocked you silly, didn't it? Yeah, I uh, I felt like I felt really good when I was at the school, but then I started, you know, you know, once the adrenaline starts coming down from training. Yep. And I got home, and all of a sudden, I was like, my fingers were going numb, and my leg yeah. went numb, and I was like, okay. So they sent me for the scans and stuff, and they wanted to fuse my neck, and I'm like, no, I'm only 46. I don't want to have it fused yet. Let's wait till it gets to that point where it's absolutely necessary. So, Right. But yeah. she also trained, if I'm not mistaken, you also trained your two daughters to wrestle. Am I correct? I do have two daughters that are in the business. Um, I helped train them, but their main training was through Michelle Starr. Yeah, I have the two daughters, the Hall sisters, uh, Bambi Hall and Liza Hall are my daughters. Yeah. Yeah, so she's carrying on the tradition into yet another generation. Yeah. And she's carrying it on old school. Yes, I am. My daughters were brought in old school, very old school. My, the Liza's... Um, Hmm. very independent <laughs> so she's uh i'm not gonna go into that whole thing it's mm. the wrestling wrestling is a whole different world now than it was back when we were in it you ain't gotta say nothing more yeah i gotta get my i gotta get my i gotta get my 
bump, 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 bump. Yeah. Where's the story? Yeah. Yeah. There isn't one. And that's why these, that's why this, this generation, their careers are only lasting five or six years because your body just can't take it. Mm. I didn't, I bumped, but I don't bump as much as these kids do today. Mm -hmm. The thing is, there's no reason for it. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no story, you know, and there's no selling. You know, everybody's got to be, I'm Big Mac. You know, it, it's. Well, it's 15 finishers before you hit a roll up. Right. So it, right. it doesn't make sense to me. But. How many pile drivers does it take to take out a, one person? I think I saw, there was one night I was watching one. There was 10 pile drivers in a tag oh, team match. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. One right. sent Danny Kaufman to the hospital. Right. Yeah. Right. One That's broke my neck. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't even I didn't even get piled right. It never got to that point. <laughs> I remember back but, when it took a, a spinning forearm would be a finisher. How about how about a a simple uh, reverse mare? You know what about uh, uh, when was the last time you saw a reverse mare? Uh. When was the last time you saw an arm drag or a hammerlock or a headlock? Do they know <laughs> get it what again. a headlock is? <laughs> yep. Kid, we're going to do a reversal. Get it again. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Two hours yeah. in the dressing room to talk over a 15-minute match. They get to the fourth, 14th high spot. They forget what to do next, and they stop in the ring. Go, <gasps> yeah. You know the the first ma- first singles match that I had with Velvet uh, was nervous as shit. Obviously, sorry, you had a swear single on. match with Velvet. I had a few, yeah. Um, oh, and cool. We, the first one that we did, um, I was like so nervous, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do this, blah blah blah. She's like, kid, we're gonna open with this. This is this. And this is the finish. I'll see you out there. And I was like, oh. and that's when I learned how to work. Right. That's when I learned to listen to the crowd and read the crowd. And the crowd will tell you what they want to see. You just got to listen. She taught right. me a valuable lesson that day. Yeah. Hey, if, if, if me being the hell out of the baby face wasn't getting over, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden there was a reverse. There was a knee. There was a chop. There was a choke. And it was my time. And I love, you know, everybody, oh, I need to win. Or I need to get over. No, hell no. I would rather sell. I'm laying on a mat. Just flop it. <laughs> it's so much easier. Agreed. Agreed. You're not so blown up. <laughs> right. Right. Yep. And by the time it's time to do the comeback and the finish, you can move. Sorry, gentlemen. We just kind of took no, over your fine. whole you're thing. Fine. That's right. no, this, <laughs> this, this actually connects because I used to do used to work in theater and, and did a lot of improv. And you know, the traditional improv the way it's taught at Second City, the way it's taught at the Groundlings and places like that, it's all about serving the scene, not serving yourself. You know, I mean, if you look at like like stand up comedians are usually not very good at improv because they're putting themselves out there. They're the ones used to be in spotlight. Then you take a guy like Bill Murray. (laughs) You take a guy like Bill Murray. I said usually, not always. Steve Martin obviously was was good at it. But um, you take a guy like Bill Murray who came out of Second City, you know, and Bill Murray is all about making – he looks great because he's all about making everybody else look good in the scene and and feeding into the scene. So, um, you know, no no, no knock on stand-up comedy there, Eddie. Not at all. So it's just – sketch sketch improv is a a unique animal, and it's – you know, if you haven't been trained in it, you don't know know how to do it. Then it's you know it's all yeah, and and it's a lot of how a lot of amateur actors come into it is just trying to make the jokes and trying to be funny and stuff like that, you know, and putting themselves over like in wrestling. But you know, the really experienced ones, the ones that are really great at it, you know, and, and this is what they teach at Second City. It's all about serving the scene. It's all about giving somebody else the punchline, setting up the next thing for the next person, and that's you know that, that's how it's supposed to be. Well, I was I was just funny that you should mention this, John, because I was just watching Robin Williams is my favorite comedian. Mm-hmm. And I was watching one of his concerts and he was going one way and there was no reaction from the crowd. 
And then all of a sudden, almost mid sentence, he did an about face mm, and he hit that. one yeah. sentence. He heard a laugh in the crowd and he took off running. So I, I know exactly. It, it's psychology. Mm-hmm. It's okay. listening to your crowd. You're bringing the people into your dream. Yeah. Exactly. I actually just, I actually just wa- watched the match of yours uh, the other night. I was watching. I think I was watching like uh, wrestling from MSG or something. But it was you and uh, Velvet McIntyre versus Wendy Richter and Peggy Lee, maybe. Oh, Peggy Lee for the, Fowler for the title yeah. for, the, for the championship. Right. Right. Yeah. That was right. A good match. Yeah. Two of the best girls in, in the business. Um, Peg, Peggy Lee and Wendy and I are all still friends. Velvet and I, of course, you know. 40 years later, we're all friends. But that was, you, at, that was the MSG, right? Uh, I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but it probably was. We did. Okay. We did. Velvet and I did MSG against. I did it against Wendy. I did it against Moolah and Singles. Velvet and I did it against Wendy and Joyce. Of course, we took the titles at MSG. You talk about something scary, Raven. Walked out there, 20 years old, 40,000 people. Oh. If you look at that match, you will see me hook Velvet's elbow, and I spin her around, and I'm going to keep it as clean as possible. I said, Velvet, look at all these effing people. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's every worker's dream, though, to work that big of a crowd. Wait, so what, what was it What was it like, I mean, going to Madison Square Garden for the first time as a, as a performer? I mean, I know what it's like going there just as a fan, but what is it like as a performer, like going in the locker rooms? I mean, what is it like, you know, behind the scenes there? Um, you would think that it was this great thing. But it's a cinder block building with old paint when I was there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you walk into the dressing room, here's four sinks. And, and like I said, all cinder blocks, chipped paint. But backstage is where, you know, we'd all come out. And the first time I was there was, oh, my God, was so funny. See, I knew Terry Hogan. Before he was Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. And my first time at MSG with Velvet and Joyce and Wendy, I go out and here comes Hulk with Hulk Terry with his wife. Well, I knew him in Portland in the eight, you know, in the late seventies, early eighties. And when he was Terry Hogan and when he was opening match, second match. And I went, hey, Terry, how you doing? He goes walking by me like he, you know, nose in the air, like he didn't hear what I said. And I sat there for a minute, and Raven knows me, and John probably knows me in my temper by now. (laughs) And I sat there, and I did a head like this. I looked down, and Piper's sitting over on a bench over here. And all of a sudden, Hogan's about 20 feet away, and I hollered out, Hey, Hogan, prima donna much? <laughs> Piper was rolling on the floor. <laughs> because he was in Portland when Terry was in Portland, when I was in Portland, and he knew exactly what I was talking about. That's great. We have uh, another surprise guest coming to the show. Oh, right boy, now. I'm scared. Not a little. Hey, 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 girl. Oh. Oh. I'm I am thank you guys. Thank you. Surprise. I can't hug you through a screen. We can we can try to hug. We can we can try to there you go. <laughs> that these two, my girls. Mm-hmm. My girls, where are you at? 
I I am at my home broadcast studio. I'm uh-huh. about to go live on Twitch. I've been running around like a crazy person trying to do a thousand things, but I, I absolutely wanted to stop by. I, I heard this was going on. Um, I wanted to show some love. You showed so much love to me. You still do. So I, I couldn't not pop by. I love you. I love you and so I, much. I, I love the forward baby girl. <laughs> that was, that was, I love you so much. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Thank-, thank you. No, thank you for everything. I'm so glad people are getting a chance to to meet you. A lot of people for the first time and maybe some people are a fresher, but like, I'm so glad you're, you're getting your, your story out there. It's fantastic. Have you read it? I have not, but I did get my copy. I Look, I bought a copy, of course, got to support you. And then I was, I was gifted one. So now me and the missus can uh, each read it together. Yeah. How's the missus doing? She's good. She's working on gear, like always, trying to get her business up and going. Uh, cheap plug. Seems legit clothing company. No. <laughs> Say what? Say seems, that again? Seems legit clothing company. Uh-huh. Send me a link. We'll do. We'll do. <laughs> but I, y'all, Eddie, John, thank you. You're very welcome. Nyla, thank you so much for stopping yeah, by. No, I'm thank you, John, not, for yeah. giving me the oh, heads up about absolutely. this. And, yeah. and thank you guys for letting me stop in and interrupt what seemed like a magnificent story. I'm <laughs> sad I missed it. I, you better interrupt any chance you get. <laughs> we'll, send, we'll, send you the, yes. we'll send you the replay on YouTube. Yes, ma'am. If, if I have to whoop your ass, is I'm going to do it right because I'm going to hurt worse than you are in the long run. John, what did I tell you? What did I yeah. tell you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I love you, girl. I miss I miss you guys so much. Miss you too. I, I miss mean, you. don't get me wrong. Washington is good for me. Being with my family is good for me. But I miss you guys a lot. Hey, you they, know, we we've all had so much fun. I I don't know if you heard, but they they made these things called planes. Like we can get on them and come out to you. Like we might have to do that. I gotta wait for the border to open. <laughs> <laughs> I will be if you look at my page. I will be in New Jersey and New York. I know for uh with the the uh don't tell me. The, I know it. It's the big event, right? Or something like the that. Hi- the hideaway? Something like that. I yeah. See, I, see. I know I am so bad at advertising. <laughs> I should have got all this written down. <laughs> but I will be there if you can make it. Okay. Then and I, I don't will. let them charge you at the door. You tell them to go tell Princess <laughs> Nyla's here. I, I, I will, will charge in. Get... If they try to charge me, I'm charging in. I expect you to girl. take out some <laughs> knees on the way in. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> oh. Vicky, I love you so much. Enjoy your evening. Thank you for letting me crash it real quick. Thanks, I love Nyla. you. Be Bye, safe. Guys. All right, Bye take care. baby. Well, that was pretty cool. Gee, she was a quick pop and y'all are stuck with me for like what the last like 20 <laughs> minutes or so running oh, from spiders. That's yeah, been terrific. <laughs> I love the stories. <laughs> so, uh, Princess of Victoria, you weren't, um, did you realize like the magnitude of being at, of what MSG was before you got there or? I mean, I'm from the I'm from the New York area, so for me, it's like you know, if you ever have a chance to play there, it's the a dream. But I don't know if it's I, like people from other parts of the country. You got to understand, I was a 20 year old kid who was raised in Portland, Oregon. I wrestled for Don Ed Moretti. Our biggest house was probably four thousand, and nobody. Nobody told me there was going to be 10, 20, 40,000 people. When you see MSG on the TV, you get a narrow look. At least you did back in the day. Um, They didn't pan up. But when you're there, like I said, I hooked Velvet's arm and I just went, oh my God. But then again, I had the training. Five people, 5,000 people, 50,000 people, you gave them the same job. 
you gave 100%. And once you locked up, although you listened to the crowd, the enormity of the crowd did not affect you. You were you were in the you were in the zone. You know, and like I said, you listened to the crowd, but you didn't pay attention to the to the size of the crowd. You paid attention to what you were doing. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. once you're in the ring and once you that as soon as you lock up, that's it. It's go time and your mind is just there. Right. Yeah. 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 Spider still out there? Uh, it's over there in its own little corner, and my chair is right here. <laughs> it's it's right there. It's yeah, not even really. Had... It's really not even that big, but the little sucker scared the shit out of me. Is he one of those little hairy black ones with a white spot on his butt? No, this thing is like a like a beigey brown with like oh, stripes no, on its leg. No, he's got to die. <laughs> well, I actually went inside to see if I could find my slipper. That's why, I but it wasn't there. So I just decided to come back. Uh, <laughs> my chair is far enough away from the table. That's why I keep leaning forward to grab my drink because the table's over there. I was sitting out on the back porch the other day, and when I get up, I go out to the back porch. I've got my coffee. I've got my phone. I got my cigarettes and I play games, you know, to wake up. I go to pick up my coffee cup and on this lint rim was one of those little black hairy jumping spiders. And I was like, mm. no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you just flicked it. I probably would have dropped my cup. No, I no, I can't. I can't uh, no, I don't drop my cup. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Vicki, I've got a couple of uh, messages from folks that couldn't join us tonight. Let me read through these for you. Uh, Gremlina was going to come on, but unfortunately she was not feeling real well today. She asked me, he said, tell Vicki I love her and wish her all the best and happiness. Um, I talked to uh, George Pantis earlier today. He asked me to say Hronia Polia, which is Greek for happy birthday. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Mark Fuller said, I'm wishing you a very happy birthday. You'll always be part of my heart. Uh, Moondog Moretti uh, asked me to pass on happy birthday. I believe he's sitting in a squad car tonight, so he'd probably rather be here. But uh, um, I'm sure uh, he would. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Penny Penny Mitchell, aka Spider Lady. Um, well, let me let me preface this. These next couple are all courtesy of Leilani Kai. She's been uh, reaching out to everybody uh, getting messages for you. Uh, she really she was trying to get on. She she she's on her phone, but she can't. Yeah, she she doesn't have have good speaker or anything, so she couldn't join us. But uh, you know, it was re really wish she could have. But uh, Penny Mitchell says, "I first met Princess Victoria when I went to Mulas to train. I remember she used to gripe at me because I wouldn't wear my glasses and she didn't like seeing me squint all the time. So I had to make an appointment, and she took me and helped me get a pair of contact lenses. It was as good as having my mama there. She's a good and caring person with a big heart. Happy birthday, Princess! Hope it's the best one yet. Love you, Penny. Yeah. Uh, next one is." Heart. Yeah, uh, Despina Montagas says, uh, Princess Victoria, thank you for your friendship and your camaraderie during a time in our lives when we were chasing similar dreams down a road full of constant turbulence. You are not only a good friend, but also my sister for life. Congratulations on getting your book published. This is just the beginning of the great success you deserve. May all your dreams come true. Much love, Despina. Oh, yeah, happy birthday. You have only just begun. Thank you, John. Uh, yeah. Next message is from Judy Martin. She says, Victoria, it's your bosom buddy, a longtime friend, Judy. I'd like to thank you for your hard work and keeping me entertained, even when we were traveling hard on those long road trips. Excited to read your book. You have a great birthday and many more. Highest respect for you, your friend, Judy Martin. And finally, Leilani sends this one. I'd like to say to Victoria, it was a blessing to know you and have the opportunity to work with you and learn from you, just as we all learn from one another. I'm excited about reading your book. There's many fans out there that love you. Thank you for all your hard work and entertainment you gave us. Have a wonderful, blessed birthday. Now, you know when we see you, John. You know what happens. You know what happens know, when you make I the know. princess cry. I know, I know. You got you got to kick Leonie's butt too cuz she 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 worked she really oh, went the extra. Uh, no, she went no, she went the no, hey, she no. went the extra mile rounding these girls up for me. But, no. So, yeah. Hey, I I know my limits. Uh, Leilani, uh, -uh. <laughs> no. 
All right, nope. take it out on me, fine. Like, I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you, but Eddie, thank you. John's a great Raven, guy, huh? Thank you for being here. Uh, Y'all stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the for the show. I I want to. I'm hoping I get to meet you in person someday. Any? But don't I, don't know, I got don't an idea. I got an idea. You need to go to CAC, Eddie. You need to go. Don't pretend that we don't know each other when, when we meet in person. Yeah. Oh, I was okay. just gonna say. Okay. If <laughs> don't pull a Hogan. Right. <laughs> Miss Vicky, if he comes to CAC, he's gonna be the new rookie. Yeah, he he's gotta sitter. be the baby. He's gotta sitter. be the baby sitter. <laughs> Boy. You're in trouble. I know Miss Vicky, but I'm telling you, you are in trouble. Oh, it's booked. It's booked. <laughs> it's booked. Don't let that discourage you, Eddie. You will have a great time. It seems oh, is uh, one of the best. Uh, it's one of the best times you can have as a wrestling fan. It's um, I, it's so much better than access and 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 the bigger events like that. And and Brian Blair is going to probably kill me for saying this. You don't have to buy the tickets to the dinners, or I would buy the ticket to the talk and to get into the, see the wrestlers and get their autographs. But just hanging around downstairs at TGIF Fridays, mm -hmm. there's a table, there's a corner, and there's a there's a circular table. From the day that CAC starts until two days after CAC ends, there is at least one wrestler to ten wrestlers sitting at that table. And you, and you can just lean over and listen. You, you will, that will be, if you're a fan, that will be the best four days of your life. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Sounds awesome. I'm excited. I can't wait. It, it's in Vegas. Is it in Vegas again this year? It's in Vegas. Uh -huh. It's at the Gold Coast. It's always at the Gold Coast. Am I right, John? I believe so. Yeah. It's a wrestler's yeah. hotel. It's, right. It's, it's inexpensive. <laughs> yeah, and they, they cut the room's not the best, you know, but you're not going to be in the room very much. So, you know. You know right. <laughs> it's, when I, I took my niece down there because they were putting me in their Hall of Fame. And I told her, I said, this is how it's going to go. We're going to get down there. It's going to take us an hour to get to our room because you're going to talk to this person, this person, this person, this person on your way to the elevator. I'm going to go up to the room. I'm going to throw my suitcase in the corner. I'm going to order you some food and I'll see you sometime tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> she finally figured out she wanted to stay up in the room, but she finally figured out that if she wanted to see me, she had to come downstairs. The only thing that room was for was taking a shower, brushing my teeth, changing my clothes, and going back downstairs. Yeah. What was it? In three days, did, did you sleep a total of 12 hours in three days, Raven? I don't think so. I don't think. I never do. I never do. Right. I've, I've gone uh, 13 years in a row. I've gone really? to this. Yeah, I go every year because it's. It's, you know, people, it's a reunion is what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I've had the opportunity. I mean, I never got to be as big as Miss Victoria. But, um, you know, when you go down there, it's, it's a family. And every year that you go down, you meet new wrestlers. And when once you're a worker and you're in the business, you're family. You know what I mean? And now I have family all over the world that I only get to see once a year. Right. And so I go every year to be with my family. Well, it seems like a, definitely a special fraternity, you know, everyone who's in the in the industry. Yep. Well, and well, I mean, I'll tell you what, from, an, from an outsider, it's it's a really interesting dynamic that, that happens with the wrestlers. Like it seems like they don't like each other, but it's but then when they but they do lo but they love each other. It's kind of like a there's like a sibling relationship where it's like. I don't like my my little. The only person who can pick on my little brother is me, but nobody else can. Kind of thing. Well, the yeah. best way, the best way I would put it is, um, you know, like we are a family, but when it's go time and it's show time, it's a different story. 
Mm -hmm. I'm either your your partner in the ring, your your tag partner, or I'm your opponent. And if I have to punch you in the face, and I got to punch you in the face, that's just the way it is. When you're in the ring, it's a different story. But when you're outside that ring, you are my family. Mm -hmm. Right. That's how I see it. I mean, back in the old day, I'd probably get my teeth knocked out for saying that. But <laughs> well, the only reason that I brought that no, up. Is when you no, no, about... you wouldn't have back in the old day because that's true. And I used to always compare wrestling to boxing when people would say well i saw roddy piper out with buddy rose and they have this horrible feud in the ring okay so george foreman mike tyson and muhammad ali have to hate each other too mm -hmm. right yeah why can they be friends in the you know outside the ring go to dinner go to bars you know have a good time but kill each other to the point they're bleeding in the ring but we can't i totally get what you're saying i get like yeah. i understand what you're saying there but i mean back i mean i didn't get into the business till the early 90s and even right. at that point when we were on the road we were still traveling heels in one car faces another we went to different bars to eat we went to different restaurants yeah. to eat we went yeah. you know it was yeah. it was just cuz if there you was didn't, a line you'd, get, you'd get fired do you know how many trunks i have ridden in to I've ridden in the back of ring trucks on top of the ring right in there right Right. No, thank God they drove Lincolns and such. So, you know, it was you <laughs> could put stretch out. six bodies in the trunk, <laughs> put me in the trunk, back up over here, hit the trunk button. And back then, they the good cars still had the trunk button, <laughs> you know, because you couldn't be seen. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Vicky, to your point about uh, about boxers, you know, don't have to hit each other outside the ring. When I was working with Scott Romer in his book, he took me to a boxing show up in Indianapolis. There's one dressing room. All the boxers are in there. And these two guys that two hours later are going to be pummeling the hell out of each other are sitting there just talking, just, you know, just, just having a casual conversation. And, you know, it was just it, there was no idea of heels, baby faces or anything like that. They're just sitting around talking. They go up there. They do their sport. And, you know, it was right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's like Velvet McIntyre and I, when we first started out, we fought each other in the ring. You know, it was me against her in uh, Idaho, um, uh, Canada, all over Canada. Oh, my God. Al Tomko did not ha know how to book. He did not know the difference between 50 miles and 300 miles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> love you Al not um, worked for Don Owens worked for Elton you know all over the Pacific Northwest and then we get down to Moolahs and then we're a tag team but what made us so good as a tag team is we fought each other for a year and a half we knew each other inside and out mm -hmm. I've often found, too, the people who are the best friends outside the ring are the ones that really go at each other inside the ring, too. Yeah. Because well, you have that trust level. Exactly, yeah. Right? Go back to high school, John. Mm -hmm. Go back to the playground. When the he-he's or the she-she's meet on the playground, beat the hell out of each other, and walk off arm in arm mm -hmm. over the shoulder, and you're friends for life. And people forget that this, you know, this is part of life. Mm -hmm. It's me roughhousing with my son. Huh? <laughs> me roughhousing with my son. Right. Ever since he was two, you know. It's wrestle time, Dad. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I had a son who stre uh, who stretched me. He's, oh. by the time he was 15, he was six foot. And... One day I, I'm sitting on the couch and he dives at me, hooks me. I'm not ready for nothing, right? Because I didn't tell him I was a wrestler until like six months previous to this happening. Um, we'll get into that later. And I'm sitting on the couch and all of a sudden he hooks me. I can't get out. He has cinched up, wrist <laughs> tight. I can't breathe. And I, I tap out. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And he, I sit down, I can't breathe. I look at him and he says, gee, mom, I thought you could wrestle. <laughs> I think some of my best matches that I ever had were actually with my oldest daughter, Bambi. Right? I honestly do. Yeah. Got some shit out in the ring, huh? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, we did. There's uh, On both sides. She uh, she almost broke my nose on my birthday. She rolled my oh. ankle. We, we had a few. There was a couple of, you know, stiff chops, you know. But we had fun with it, too, in the ring, you know. like Because especially around here, where we're from, no matter where we went, we were always booked as a mother-daughter feud. You know, my kid's coming in to steal my spot, yada, yada, yada. Gotcha. So I, I would always pull, like, stupid shit out of my hat, you know. Like, I'd get her down and tell her she's grounded for the next six months for not doing the dishes or <laughs> something stupid. <laughs> you know. It was a lot of fun, <laughs> but yeah, that just goes back to the whole trust thing, right? Yeah. Right. I I can't I, wait for you to 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 meet my girls. You're gonna you're oh, gonna love them. I I can't I can't wait either. Just knowing you're their mother, I can't wait. <laughs> we'll put them through the babysitting thing the next time they come to CACs. <laughs> that would be serious payback. That would be serious. <laughs> Because they know, they, I brought uh, all three, I have three daughters, uh, one that's not in the business, um, she sings and, and uh, she's really into horticulture, but um, oh, really? I brought all, yeah, yeah, she actually just got a, a job with the city here doing horticulture, my youngest oh, one. Nice. But uh, I, I brought them all down to, to CAC one year just so that they could, you know, get a taste of it. Liza actually had a match with Malaya there. Um, oh. It was good. It's on, uh, on YouTube, but. And where was I? How was I going with that? Oh, I, I was a single mom when I raised my kids. I, I uh, was on my own raising all three of the girls. And you I was a very, that. you know, like, like uh, inverted, I guess you would say, mother. Like, I didn't drink. I didn't go to parties. I went to work. I came home. I raised my kids. I did my, my do or whatever. So when we were at the CACs and... You know, when I go there, that's oh! my let go. Yeah, <laughs> Mama has a good time. So they saw a totally different side of Mom that year. That was something else. Right. But now they're, they're, now they're all old enough that they can drink down there. So. Well, trouble. you remember what happened to my niece. The first, we were there four days. And yeah. she's sitting at the wrestler's table. And she's 15. 2018 to the, she's 17. Going on 17. She was 16. And for the entire first three days, you know, Erin is sitting with us right there. You know, she's getting served. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, the last day, this waitress comes up. And I said, I want blada, blada, blada for Erin. Oh, she can't be out here. She's underage. And I went, are you kidding me? No, the, you know what? The first year I took Bambi down to the CACs when she first got into the business, I took her down just so she could meet people and try and, you know, get to, uh, you know. Um, to network. Uh, yeah, that's the word. Thank you very much. Um, we were standing at the, at the bar downstairs, the big bar there, the long right. one in the middle. Right. And we were standing there and we were all talking or whatever. And she had a drink in her hand. We weren't thinking. I mean, we're from Canada at 19. You can, you know, you're legal right. to go to a bar. Some provinces it's 18. Right. So we were standing there and um, Bambi's drinking and the security guard comes up and he's like, um, what's in your cup? And so she told him and he's like, how old are you? And she told him I'm 19. And he's like, well, we're going to find you. We're going to find your mother. We're going to find the bar, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, whoa, I caught a promo. <laughs> I was like, hey, you know what? We're from Canada. Man. I had no idea. We were just going to chill and relax. Went you right know, up the there. Is, oh, just right into it. I'm like, up and, uh, you know, where we're from, you only have to be 19 to have a drink. You know, we didn't even think of it. But I just went on and on and on. So she had to go upstairs and get her passport and her ID and stuff to prove that she was 19 and that we were from BC or they were going to fine us and the, the casino. And then from that point on for like the next three days, they had her picture on their cameras. So no matter where she went in the hotel, they followed her on the cameras and she could only go from the hotel room to Fridays or up to the, 
to the events upstairs that had to do with wrestling. She couldn't Are be anywhere else on the floor. Me? Yeah. Oh nope. They watched her. It was crazy. But man, I tell you, I cut a promo. I was like, just I just clicked right in. I'm like, no, 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 Matt. We're from Canada. We can drink in Canada. <laughs> Saved our ass. Good. Yeah. But why would the security guard for the coast, Gulf Coast, or Gold Coast, try to burn the Gold Coast? Do you think he's he was doing his job, right? No. She looked. She looked really young. When you look back at some of those uh, pictures, like she looked really young. Uh, like, so she, she was a baby, younger, right? She looked younger than Aaron did then. Yeah, like she she looked young, so. There was no, and I mean, he had to do his job. I get it, but yeah, we learned a lesson for sure. Oh, well, and so goes life. That's it. Eddie's Gentlemen, just you're too back quiet. There. I'm, just, I'm just listening to you guys talk about these great He's stories. He's just sitting there with the best job in the going. world. He gets he to sit there and listen to stories every week. Yeah. So, yeah. So know. If you think these are good, you ought to hear the ones we tell in the dressing room. <laughs> they, well, they, we can. They, I mean, you, you can they, share them. That's fine. <laughs> all these guys, all these people think the guys' dressing room is so bad. Let me tell you what. You ain't been in a ladies' locker room. Women are brutal. I didn't know that there was a. I thought that they had the same locker room back then. No, not all the time. Oh, interesting. Not okay. all the time. There were times we had our own dressing room. It really There's depended one, on the promoter. Uh, also the building. If there was a place for the women to be, if you, <coughs> if you had a good promoter and there was a place for the women to be where they could shower and so on by themselves, we'd have our own dressing room. There were some. There were some cards you didn't want to have your own dressing room. You want to be in there with the guys because it was going to be fun. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's one, one story. I, I went to Florida. And when I first started training for wrestling, I was dating a wrestler. And we happened to be at the Bomber Motel. And it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. And... Me out of nowhere, laying beside him, I chipped up. I said, guess what? He said, what? I said, I start wrestling training tomorrow. He said, no, you don't. I said, what? He says, I'm not dating no Mickey Mouse wrestling. I'm sure that went over well. Oh, wait for it. <laughs> and I said, what? He said, you're going to call Sandy Barr tomorrow morning or in the morning, and you're going to tell him you're not trained to become a wrestler. And I went, what? <laughs> and he said it again. <laughs> I mean, I gave him the warning. When a woman says what? It's not that she wants to hear you repeat what you said. She's giving you a chance to change it. And he said it again. And I looked at him to my right. I said, no, I'm not. He said, well, then you need to go. I said, you're absolutely correct. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I got up. I got dressed. I gathered all my things into my grip, and I walked out the door. Didn't see him from that day till four years later. We're in Florida. <laughs> it's me. It's Velvet. It's Leilani. It's Wendy Richter. We're semi-main event. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he's the opening match. Oh. <laughs> and I walked in I'm going to let bygones be bygones You know me, I don't have an ego <laughs> Unless you're an uh -huh. um, And I walked in I walked right up to him I said, hey Joe, how you doing? And he walked by me Like he didn't know me And I said 
Hell not dating a Mickey Mouse wrestler, ain't it? And the whole damn dressing room busted out laughing. That is awesome. Well, you know who you know who I'm talking about when I say Joe. I n no, I don't. Indian. Oh. Right. Oh. Yes. His partner. <laughs> Thank you. I was <laughs> young and dumb. <laughs> we, uh, we've, we've all been there. We've all been there. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to Google to see who could possibly have been. <laughs> he Is it was in the book? Joe Lightfoot's partner in the Pacific Northwest. If you can't get it from there, you can't get it from All anywhere. Right. <laughs> uh, that's that's amazing. That's, 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 he that's actually told me that I was going to call Sandy and quit in the morning. <laughs> He had some balls. No, that's one, that's one thing you'll definitely get from the book. Nobody tells, <laughs> nobody tells Vicky no. Nobody tells her she can't do something. Now, now there was the one time down in Louisiana that she learned that maybe sometimes I should listen. It was it was the the, the, the Pat O'Brien story about the, uh, is it the hurricane? Uh, the, no, they, that yeah, Pat O'Brien's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and they knew. My dear, darling friends knew when they said you can't drink two. I was going to try to drink two. That's we'll save that one. That's one of the best stories in the book. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Tully. Yes. <laughs> We're supposed to be in Texas. We are in Texas. <laughs> Where was it? Where was one of your favorite places to work? Bill Watts, Louisiana. Yeah. Terry Taylor. Magnum. Terry Allen. Buddy Landell. DiBiase. Um, oh, crap. I sh we shared a motel room. That did that story make it into the book? Uh oh, who you're sitting there? Oh shoot, yes, the it did. The, the DBRC and yeah. uh, oh, I'm blanking. Who was it? It's in the. I've got the book here. It's in the Mid South chapter. N Nikita. It's not. Was it Nikita? Wasn't Nikita. No, no, no. Shoot, I'm. Ugh. Jim Neidhart. Yeah. Jim Neidhart. We're in. <coughs> we're in Louisiana. Don't tell like all I your said. stories. They won't buy your book. <laughs> Um, we're in Louisiana and this is back in the day, Raven, like you, you know, you had a dress on, you had heels on, you presented when you walked to the arena. Yeah. So I'm in my room and Jim Neidhart and Wendy and I were sharing a, mo a motel room with Jim Neidhart because we're all trying to save money. Me and Wendy worked for Moolah. That was our reason. Jim had a family and I'm sitting there, I'm ironing my dress and phone rings. I said, Hey, this is Vicki. Hi, this is Jim Neidhart's wife. I want to know why you're sharing a room with my husband. Um, wow. Ma'am, the reason we're sharing a room is because Jim is a perfect gentleman and we can trust him. And me and Wendy and Jim are just trying to save money. And she went on on a spew and she trashed Jim all to snot. And Jim was a friend of mine at the time. And he was, he was one of the pure gentlemen. I swear to God, you could have put him in a room of 20 naked women that rate a 9 to a 10. And the only thing this man is thinking about is his wife and his kids. And she started really ragging Jim. And I said, excuse me. I said, but the reason your husband is in this room, sharing a room with me and Wendy is so he can save money to send it back to you and your kids. 
And I really don't appreciate the way you're talking about it. Well, let me tell you what. I'll be up to your room in just a minute. I said, fine, I'll be right here. And I slammed down the phone. And I'm sitting there and I'm ironing my dress. And all of a sudden it hit me. Because sometimes I don't think real clear. <laughs> there is an angry wife coming up to my room that has come all the way from Canada because she thinks I'm in this room sleeping with her husband. And my heart hand started doing this. And I'm trying to iron my dress. And I'm turned turned around the dresser to look at the door. And all of a sudden the phone rings again. And it's Ted DiBiase. And I hear all this laughing in the background. He said, Vicki, I just thought I'd let you off the hook. That was one of the girls. It's not Jim's wife. What You're going to be a rib. Right. <laughs> rib. Serious rib. That is so amazing. That's funny. And by the way, Ted, if you're watching, I still <laughs> haven't paid you back for that one. It's coming. What a great guy he is. I, I, on, I only got to meet him once. He came up here to work an invasion show. And uh, what, what a total gentleman. He took, like, any time one of the, the younger workers wanted to talk to him and get advice or anything like that, oh, he was more than willing. More than willing. What a great guy. Great that's guy. That's old school. That, that's back in the day when we were a family. Like you said. Yeah. We were this big family, and I can beat the snot out of my brother or sister, but don't you lay a hand on them. Yeah. And, you know, your brother or your sister calls you, I'm 200 miles away, I'm broke down, I need X, Y, and Z. Yeah. If X, Y, and Z means you got to jump in your car and you got to go get them and you got to take them to a show, that's what you do. Yeah, and and I don't think they have that today, and I'm really sad about that because they're missing it. Yeah, you know, I agree. You know, wrestling, wrestling saved me. You know, if it was if it wasn't for me going to work for Sandy Bar, there's no telling what could have happened. But I'm glad it happened in 1978. And not today. Hmm. It, it's yeah. such a, it's the money's not there for a lot of these guys. And it's a part time. They work their job during the week. They go on the weekends and, and they don't get to have that camaraderie because they can't, you know, there's not the places for them to go to work like they used yeah. to be. No, that's, that's and, part of it. But, uh, you know. and you're probably right, John, because back in the day when I, when I first started wrestling from day one, it was six, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And you're not wrestling six or seven matches. There could be a week where you wrestle nine matches because you've got a, a match in this town in the afternoon, and then you've got a match in the next town in the evening. And, and then if you get to that town and the other car doesn't make it for some reason or something happens, now you're working two matches because mm -hmm. they need to make that extra match. You're going to do a mixed. Right on the nose. Absolutely correct. Um, yeah. Uh, or somebody gets hurt. Yes. You know, and uh, back in the day, when I broke my collarbone, I got covered by the promoters, by the guys. You know, it was like, okay, you can't take a bump. You can't work. They turned me into a manager for two weeks until, you know, until things I thought were healed. <laughs> Broken collarbone doesn't heal in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Part mine, of that. mine spins this way from here to here, and it spins the opposite way from here to here. Feels so good on when the barometer starts changing. <laughs> oh, sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know what? I think part of the reason that there's not a lot of money anymore, like in the indies, is because it's so flooded now. I'm probably I'm gonna catch shit for this one, but who cares? I'm retired. It doesn't matter anymore. Mm. Um, right. I, it it's so flooded now with everybody. 
anybody can be a wrestler now. Mm -hmm. They will take and, anybody in and right. train them. And there's so many workers out there that there's just. Is that way? Do you think they're not you think? workers? Huh? Because, I'm, Excuse because in the comedy is kind of the same. I mean, I'm a stand-up comedian. I was a comedian for 15 years. It's kind of the same thing where anyone could be a comedian to show up at a, at a place and try to get on stage. But I think there's more too. I think YouTube and Snapchat and. People don't have a, a attention spans. Every time they come out with a new technology, it's a shorter clip mm -hmm. of someone mm -hmm. being funny for four seconds because uh, I don't know. Maybe humans got got dumber and <laughs> something, but <laughs> you know, they can't see the watch the story. Right. Well, it's like I was about to say when she said, "There's so many indies and there's so many wrestlers," but how many of these wrestlers know how to wrestle? They and know how to wrestle. They don't know how to work. Right. Thank you, ma'am. You're thank you for the correction. She's absolutely correct. Anybody can wrestle. I can take my son out in the ring, which I'll never do. Train him for two hours, put him in the ring, and he can wrestle. But he cannot work. When I got trained back in Raven's Day, when she got trained. Rent, Sandy beat me up so bad. And I just found out about three months ago from uh, Jesse, his son, that he called up Jesse and said, I can't, I can't get this witch to quit. He was actually physically trying to make me quit. And, and they wanted to was, see if he could cut it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't back in my day in training. It wasn't if you were going to throw up. It was how many times you were going to throw up. And which garbage bucket on the four sides of the ring were you going to hit or were you going to hit it at all? Yeah. I'm getting loud. I'm sorry. You, this, um... this, 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 is my, this, is, this is my milk crate. I am really sad that See, Sandy Barr never, never charged me a dime to train me. Oh, but it cost me a million dollars physically. These wrestlers today are getting trained twenty five dollars, fifty dollars, thousand dollars. They're training for a month, two months, and these so called trainers are throwing them in the ring. Yeah. You know, and that's how and people get hurt. Ex that's how I, I remember. Wrote. You know, here's here's one thing that uh, oh God, I'm causing myself a lot of heat on this. Um, one thing that really bothers me now is like when I when I was training, when you were in the ring, you you listened and you watched. You kept your mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? So if yes, there's a trainer in there and they're taken the time out of their life to teach you what they are the most passionate about in their life and to give you all of their teachings, you shut your mouth. If you didn't shut your mouth, you were outside doing 500 squats or you were doing push-ups or you were getting chopped or you were doing freaking that damn bump drill where you, you bump, you get up, you bump, you get up 50 times. You know what I mean? You were taught yep. to learn to respect your trainers. I was uh, at a at a school and I was trying to teach somebody something and I got I was I was getting pissed like I'm taking my time to teach you my passion and you can't shut up long enough to learn what I'm trying to teach you and I got mad. I so I stopped the class and I said if you're not going to listen to me get out and do some squats. I want to see 100 squats and then you can come back in the ring. Boy did I get in shit for that. Oh, I got in so much trouble. You can't talk Are to the trainees. Are you kidding like, me? Yeah, and I, I, I kind of swore a little bit, and, you know, I got mad about it. But you can't talk to people like that these days. You just can't do it. You'll find yourself in a lawsuit yeah. or yeah. whatever. It's a whole different world now. But, yeah, I got in trouble for that. So that's that it, it's is a different when, world. That is when a signed contract with explicit details as to what you're going to go through training and if you react in this position 
this is what is going to happen. And if you don't do what you're told, there's the door. These days, they won't sign that contract. Then they I don't wrestle. It. It's so different now. Then it's so, it, it's just wrestle. a different world. I, Cindy, I agree with you. I'm old school. I agree I know. a thousand times, but it's just Sandy it's so Bart, different. Sandy Bar didn't, like I said, didn't charge me a dime. Mm -hmm. Ed Wyskowski didn't charge me a dime. Buddy Rose, Roddy Piper, Stan oh, Stasiak. Dale Lewis, um, Red Bastine, and and what was the name of the one I saw the other day that I had forgotten about? He was Murph the Surf. Now, if that doesn't take you back, I don't know what does. All these guys came in and gave us their time for free. So lucky. Not one dime from any of them. And I've missed people. I know I've missed people. But not one dime. But we were down. When these people started coming down, we went from a group of 20 or 25 down to a group of four. Mm -hmm. And that's when these people came in. And you know how hot Buddy was and Piper was mm -hmm. in 79, 78, 79, 80. You know, this was the Bu Buddy Rose Piper feud. Buddy Rose put me over wow. after Piper left. This, you know, but it's not that way anymore. It's a, ah! No. Come here, boy. You only weigh 90 pounds soaking wet. And you five <laughs> foot two, but you could be a wrestler. Mm. Just give me a thousand dollars. Oh, no, yep. that was Mula. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was waiting for something to come out of there. What's in your cup, Vicky? <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to tell my girls, you know, like sometimes when uh, when the promoters will bring in, you know, uh, a bigger worker, like a name from the day or whatever, you know, they just want to get in there and roll around too. And sometimes some of them will say, you know, they'll look around and see the kids out there. And, you know, if they're going to give you that opportunity to get in there and roll around with them or Damn anything, straight. if they're even going to take the time to talk to you, sit down shut up and take every advice that you can anything if they tell you to get in that ring i, I i'm not going to name any names at all but this pissed me off one day we had a show you worked the legendary alice mckay building correct say that again did you work the alice mckay building in cloverdale, cloverdale oh yeah BC? oh hell yeah, yeah. okay so okay yeah so <laughs> we're, we're at the alice mckay building and they brought in a top name. We'll leave it there. And he's looking around and there's all these younger workers, you know, I don't think any of them were more than maybe two years in tops. And he's like, you know, I feel like rolling around. Does anybody want to come in and roll around and, you know, just take some time with me? This young guy literally stood up out of his chair and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, I think I need to go get something to eat and then I'm going to take a nap before my match. My jaw just about hit the floor. I couldn't even believe it. I turned, I spun in my chair and I looked at my girls because they were sitting there and I looked at them and they were up off that chair like that and in the ring. But after the show, I took this boy aside and I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, do you understand the knowledge that you could be taking in right now? He's offering this knowledge right. you're mm -hmm. not going to get anywhere else. Like, my God. Yeah. Well, it's just you the... Go ahead. You remember what Malaya did at CAC in the Mula controversy when mm. they asked the girls, us girls, if we had anything to say. You remember what I said. We'll save that for another day. <laughs> and Malaya stood up and said, yeah, I've got five legends up here. And not one of you girls has come up in the last two days to even Ask them a question. Now, see, yeah, when I was coming pity. up, yeah, when I was coming up, I was riding with Rick Oliver, Stan Stasia. I should have been a heel, but I was Indian. Nah. 
<laughs> but I was right. You were too pretty. You were you too pretty to be pulling anymore. the heel. <laughs> oh, hey, I'll scar it up. We can go back in time. I'll scar it up. Uh, like I said, I've rode in too many trunks. But sitting in Rip Oliver's motor motor home, and I've got Stan Stasiak here. I've got Buddy Rose here. I've got Rip Oliver driving. And they're just, they're talking this, that, or they, they're talking over a match they saw or something they did. My mouth, believe it or not, was shut. All I did was sit there and listen. And I learned so much yeah. just sitting there and listening. Yeah. That's honestly my favorite thing to do sometimes at shows is just to be the fly on the wall and whoever's telling stories around you, you know, when I met, um, when I went to the hall of fame for the first time a couple of years ago, rock riddle was walking around and I'd never met rock. Didn't know who he was, but I Googled him real quick as he was making his way over. And as soon as he got to my table, I was like, so I understand you were on the gong show. And he just went you know, and gave me 20 minutes and talking about Chuck Barris and other shows he had been on and stuff. And actually not too long ago I was on YouTube looking up a show called Fernwood tonight with Martin Mull and uh, Fred Willard. There's an episode where they had a wrestler on and it's rock riddle. And he hadn't seen that clip in probably 40 years. So, but I mean, it's, I think there's a misconception, you know, and there's, there's this imaginary wall, you know, between, between people coming into the business, whether it's the young wrestlers or even fans or something like that. And, you know, wrestlers have stories and they want to talk to their people and, you know, I mean, ask them a question, you know, bring something up, bring, Hey, what about this match? Hey, what about this? What about that? And, you know, and, and then just sit back and listen. Absolutely. You know, I might be just be speaking. I might just be speaking for myself. But I mean, as, as being retired now and I'm done, I mean, I'm living through my daughters and watching them work. But when somebody comes up to me and they actually, like they'll want to talk about a specific match that I did when, you know, in, in 92 or 93, you know, it totally boggles my mind and it makes my heart feel full to know that somebody actually remembers what I did, that I did actually matter at some point in time. You know, now, I mean, I'll, I, I'm really nobody now in the wrestling world, but these people remembered what I did. Excuse the second year the I was hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know what I mean. Like I'm just uh, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> Shut <until>. up. <laughs> you're the lady that lost a, you're the lady that lost a couple legends on Fremont Street. That's who you are. So. <laughs> right. See? No, now see what and the, I and the told... woman running from spiders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I haven't told is the next morning I came downstairs and I was told by Debbie and everybody else, Raven won't come downstairs because she lost you last night. I was scared. I didn't know who was going to get me and first. I, told Debbie, I said, have you got her on your cell phone? She said, I said, call her. And she answered. I went, get your ass down. And hung up. I was phone. shitting my pants. I was so scared. <laughs> I was so scared because I knew her and Debbie were sitting at the table. And the, the first time I, that was the first year that I had met Debbie as well. And I was sitting at the ta at Fridays at the round table. And we're sitting there and we're all talking and whatever. And Miss Beverly's eating her biscuits and gravy. And Debbie comes and sits at the table. And she sat down right across from me. And she just put her arms on the table and she just mugged me. And I was like, I sat back in my chair. And I'm just kind of looking around. And she's like, who the beep is this bitch sitting at my table? And I thought I was going to die right there. And I don't remember who it was. I don't remember who it was. If it was Maleo or if it was Miss Beverly, somebody told her she's one of Velvet's girls. And she was like, oh, welcome to the family. But I thought I was going to die. <laughs> my God. God, what a great weekend that she, was. It was the best weekend be of my life. She can be so intimidating. But yes, once she can. You get to, once you get to know her, you can see right through it. <laughs> she well, is, I, I won't she go is, that far, but she, she still scares me. She's a sugar bear. She don't scare me. Her <laughs> mother, even at 90, Miss Cora, mm -hmm. now that scared me. <laughs> God, you know, that that was probably like the greatest weekend of my life. It really was. It was so, 
I mean, yeah, I was a worker. I did stuff, whatever. But to be able to sit with you ladies, my God, that was. Well, we're going to have to it top was amazing. that one. We're just going to have to top that one. We can't leave this at one. We got to go no, higher. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> we, we've, got, we've got one babysitter in the making up there. And I'll bring my kids. So between the three of them. They ain't got They a should chance. be okay. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say they might have a chance. But <laughs> I don't know. Once Liza starts this, drinking, we're screwed. Shall we put some money on this bet? <laughs> hmm. There's three. Can I? Can I? Can I escape all three? Oh. I don't think it's even a question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's quite yeah. possible because she seems to know how to distract people. Yeah. Yeah, she has any, a sidekick in there. Uh, hold on. Any, I saw I saw the comment you 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 put up there earlier about you know, oh. Vicky's giving away all the stories and everything oh, in the no. book. And you thought, oh. like, if, if you haven't been following along, you can't stop Victoria. She, I can't. I say, no, right. you can't do that. She's gonna go and tell them anyway. And, and it, it's it's you know as great as fun as it is to read the book, like it's more fun to listen to it. Well, you John, know? someone someone wants to know what book you're working on now. Wahoo McDaniel. Oh. <gasps> Say that again? With, no Wahoo shit. McDaniel. I'm working with uh, Carrie. Are McDaniel. you kidding me? Okay. I didn't know that until just now. Well, I need to get, if you've got some Wahoo stories that we're going to be talking about. Oh, soon. I've got a story, okay. but I don't know if you print it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, well, wait, sometimes we, gotta, we, we can keep those those off the record stories. So, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I'll, I'll uh, tell you the story and you decide if you want to print it. I all right. That care. sounds good. That sounds good. I'm going to be 60 in, what, five days? Mm -hmm. Might as well have yeah. fun with it. Might as well. <laughs> they can't eat me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> be nice, John. I'm being nice. I'm being nice. <laughs> I'm being nice. You're taking a picture of all of us on here, aren't you, Raven? A what? Oh, I thought you were taking a picture of all of us on here with you side by side. What were you no, just I doing? Can't. Watching my spider. <laughs> <laughs> For goodness sake, somebody got there and killed that spider. God, I miss course. you so much. She is so. <laughs> Uh, it's not even that big, but it's so gross. <laughs> I just can't do it. You know, I, I love to go camping. Like, I, I'm huge into nature. I love to go camping and stuff. But even if there's a spider in my tent, I will not get in it until somebody proves to me that it's dead in that piece of paper. Right. I don't know. I don't know what it is about spiders. They're just not cool. Well, I really don't have a problem with those little black ones with the little white spot. Because mm. they're just jumping spiders and they can't bite you. Or daddy long legs, the most poisonous spider. I, I in the can world. handle daddy. They're poisonous? A daddy long Oh, yeah. It is the most poisonous spider in the world. Well, shit, but those it, were the ones I weren't afraid of. Thank you. Daddy wait long for legs. it. They time. cannot bite through your skin. So, how are they poisonous? They don't. That's why they're safe. They can't bite through your skin. If you see a daddy long leg in your house, put yeah. it in a corner. It kills flies. That is the well, one okay. spider I'm I will okay live with. with. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And those little black ones, hairy ones with a little white spot on their butt, mm -hmm. they're not poisonous. Anything other than that has to die. <laughs> <laughs> The only reason I have a spider tattooed on my arm is because my dad actually has the same tattoo on his arm. Got it. Yeah. That's so the only reason that's there. I got it. I get it. Well, you, you saw mine for Jack. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, let's get um, another. Let's see. Somebody else says, uh, I've talked to several of the current ladies, and not one of them has any knowledge of the ladies who wrestled before Trish. Okay. That's sad. You guys need to read Victoria's book. You need to read Mildred Burke's book. And I think you should read Elvira Snodgrass's book too. But you should definitely read Victoria's and you should definitely read the Mildred Burke book. It is it is it is really sad to me what Vinny has done to women's wrestling. And just about every show I take time to tell Vinny. What a jerk and a misogynist I think he is. 
He has taken women's professional wrestling and destroyed it. And it started back in 1987 or before. There was a show. What year were we in Kuwait? Was that 86, 87, or 88? Oh, that, was, that was the 90s. That was the early. Um, okay, not Kuwait. 1991. Then. Okay. All right. Anyway, I was up late one night, and I happened to turn on my 55-inch DLP. And I'm watching these three women from WWE at the time. And Triple H is out there, and he's Santa. And these women are supposed to be having a competition to be Santa's little helper. Otherwise, to hand out presents to the troops with Triple H. And I'm going, cool, a competition. I hadn't watched wrestling in God knows when. My ex-husband, another reason he's an ex. Um... And so I'm sitting there, and I'm really interested, and there's a ring, and there's all these soldiers, and Triple H is sitting out there, and here come the girls, and I can't remember their names. I'm sure you can look it up, and they're all in these cute little Santa coats, which I didn't have a problem with that because we all had our cute coats, right, Raven? You know, I mean, look at all the cute coats Velvet had. Yes. Look at what I had. Didn't have a problem with that. Till they took off their coats. And I went, are you kidding me? They had three triangles and butt floss. Yeah. What, what was worse than that was what I thought was a competition which I thought was a wrestle-off, was a dance-off. These three women got up in the ring to dance, and the only thing that was missing was the pole. And it was everything I could do not to put my foot through my 55-inch DLP. I call it the, the kitten ass era. Mm -hmm. The next thing I saw was here's Vinny's wife, Miss Linda. And this is a scene and they're showing steps behind her and in comes this manager. Can't remember his name. And he's telling her what Vinny had done wrong and Vinny had done this and Vinny had cost him money. And he said, and Miss Linda, you're going to pay for it. And what you saw next was him hook his arm with Miss Linda and start leading her up the stairs. He degraded his own wife. That's what Vinny did to women's wrestling. That's why the headlines on the WWE Network now is women's wrestling doesn't bring in money. Gee, I wonder why. I don't know. I, if there was a, a whole era there where it was just straight tit and ass, and that's, that's just what people were paying for to see, unfortunately. Um, with I their really, bikinis and they're all there, you know. Where the women weren't really wrestling. They were just there to... I just call it the tit and ass era. It was a disgrace era to me. Um, some of the women that are, you know, that are in the business now are really, really trying to make a difference. Maybe not so much in the WWE so much, but you know, like. So it really started you, with you, the independence. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. really is. The women in the India in, in the Indies are just freaking killing it. Like Here, you're seeing some get, real me, good stuff. Let me give you a few names. I was smart. I run them down this time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm old. I need props now. Sumi Sakai. Mm. Respect. Malaya Hosaka. Of course, respect. Mm -hmm. Kelly Klein. Mm -hmm. Watch your matches. Oh my God. Number four, Miss Raven Lake. Rhonda Rusey. 
until she did the get arrested set. Then it was like, really, girl? Taylor Hendricks, mm -hmm. Nyla Rose, Madison Miles. Then you can look at the Zelina screw job that just happened. He fired her because she had a problem wrestling during this COVID problem. No, I'm sorry. How bad do you need one wrestler that you have to fire her because she's got a problem wrestling during COVID? She's not taking any money. She's not on a payroll. She gets paid contract per match. But you fire her because she doesn't want to wrestle. And your headlining male is out and is allowed to be out because he's high risk. Because he's had two bouts of leukemia. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's a double standard. Yep. Sure is. So... Uh, John, where can people find the book? Find people can find the book on Amazon.com. They can find it on EatSleepWrestle.com. Uh, Vicky is selling them as well on Facebook if you want to get it personalized. Uh, she's also got 8 by 10 she'll sign for you. And if you have not, if uh, it's Vicky Otis on Facebook. If you haven't seen the dream catchers she's making, they're, they look fantastic. Oh, they're beautiful. They really are. And uh, so, I mean, hit her up on Facebook for all three of those things. Uh, or you can find the book on my website or Amazon as well. And Princess Victoria, where you, where will you be again in um, in your parent appearances that you're going to be doing? Give me one second. Let's see if I can look it up. Give me one second. Of course, my computer's slow. That's all right. We want to make sure people get – now, is it going to be a public appearance or is it going to be like one of those – There's virtual? going to be two public appearances and where the heck are they, really? Ah, here we go. Is Captain's Hidden Treasure. Okay. There's going to be three ways to get an autograph, a photo, a card, or a book, which I will be bringing books, May 14th, 15th, and 16th. There'll be a virtual signing on Captain's Corner Facebook page yep. at Captain's Hidden Treasure with me on Saturday, May 15th at 11 a.m. I'll be signing at the Wrestling Coll Collector in Stockholm, New Jersey until 2 p.m. Last oh, cool. but not least, on May 15th, I'll be signing at 11 a.m. in Albany, New York. At Heroes Hideout. Um, when is it? Wait, when is that one? That is. You would wait till I clicked it off, right? <laughs> That's May fifteenth, right? You said. Let's go to our Facebook page. It's all on there. <laughs> it's on my Facebook page. Hang on, I'll give it to you. And of course, my computer is running slower than molasses in winter time. At least you got a computer. I'm on a phone. With my spider. <laughs> Does the spider have a phone? I know. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Okay. May 15th. Uh, May 16th. Is that the one you're wow. looking for? That's uh, a hero, Heroes Hideout, right? In Albany? Uh, yeah, that's Heroes Hideout in Albany on Sunday. Oh, that's cool. Where? All right, nice. Well, hopefully, are you gonna and you're gonna have copies of the book with you as well? Yes, sir. Yeah. I will have a limited twenty copies for that. Huh? So <laughs> if you want them, you better get on there quick. Right. Yeah. Should now, be good if you don't get them on there, if you don't get them on there, you can come on my Facebook page, Vicky Otis. And you can get them there. All you got to do is scroll down and you'll know it's me. All right. Well, listen, I uh, appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Hope, um, looking forward to seeing you guys in person at some point, hopefully this year. Definitely, definitely doing the CAC thing. I mean, I'm 100% signed up. 
Because I've talked to babysitter. so many people that are going to be there that I'm like, I, found, I feel like I should go. Eddie, it doesn't yeah. matter if you go there yeah. by yourself and you know nobody. It will be the all you got to do is walk around and open your ears. Yeah. It will be the greatest time you ever had. I'm just going to go there and hang out with Rock Riddle the whole time. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying more. I'm... <laughs> nope, not me. Hey, Rock, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> All right, well, Princess Victoria, everybody, go out, get her book, go to Amazon, check her out, Vicky Otis, and, uh, and check out the appearances that she'll be doing. Raven Lake, thanks so much for coming by. Thank, Thank you, you for letting Raven. me be here for the whole yeah. time. I appreciate it. And Miss Vicky, I love you more than you know. And I appreciate you everything you've done for women's wrestling and for all of us women that follow in your, fourth p in your, in your path. I hope you know that you are a true trailblazer. And we love you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And happy birthday. I love you, baby girl. I cannot wait to put my arms around. You know it doesn't matter. I'm going to hug you when I see you. I'm waiting for it. I love you. I'll All talk right. to you later. See you guys. See you, John. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Vicky.